in the book of Psalms that says, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And this is a, a wonderful day to rejoice. Justin and Ellen, we are so excited to have you here today and to be here for this uh, beautiful worship service, uh, uniting Justin and Ellen in, in holy marriage. Everything you need for our worship this afternoon will be on the screens. So let's begin uh, in the name of our triune God, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are here in the sight of God and his people to rejoice with Ellen and Justin as they begin their lives as husband and wife. God established marriage at the beginning of time as a blessing to the man and woman he created, and he continues to guide and bless those he unites in marriage. So God intends marriage to reflect the union of Jesus and his people. He instructs husbands to imitate the unconditional and self-sacrificing love of Christ. And he urges wives to reflect the Christian's joyful respect and submission to Jesus. Our Savior's love for us then empowers us to love one another. Husbands and wives grow in love as they live in the love of Christ. John wrote in his first letter, This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as the atoning sacrifice for our sins. God intends the union of husband and wife to bring happiness, to offer help and support in times of sadness and joy, and to provide a home where children can grow in the knowledge and love of the Lord. So all who enter marriage ought to do so reverently, thoughtfully, and in keeping with the purpose for which God gave it. So let's pray. Gracious and eternal God, in the beginning you created man and woman and established marriage by your design and wisdom. So please now look with favor on Ellen and Justin who come to you seeking your blessing on their marriage. Continue or guide them with your word that with genuine faithfulness and unwavering love for one another, they may honor and keep the promises they make today. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Three readings I'm going to work my way through. It won't be too long, I promise. This is not going to be here all day. But I want to kind of under talk about love and just see how it's going to wind its way through your lives. Uh, when you think about that word love, I, I can't help but all of the, the great love songs. And they think about weddings, they say one of the best or most popular love songs is the Elvis love song, Can't Help Falling in Love. I kind of prefer more of the monster ballads, right? Poison and Def Leppard and their love songs. <laughs> but when you look at the, how all those songs talk about love, and especially those are very common wedding reception songs, the Bible's going to speak a lot differently. And in order to talk about love and marriage, you have to begin with the love, how God speaks about it, and the disciple of love, John, talks about it. And he talks about not just what is love, but the perfect example of love. So we're going to start our definition there. Listen to our first reading. It's from John, or 1 John chapter 1. It says this. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. And here's our very specific example of love tonight. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. So now we see, beginning, love comes from God, and God is love, and the way he shows his love is by giving us Jesus uh, as the perfect substitute for our sins. So then you're, you see that as the definition and the base of our love. Now, um, the great love chapter of the Bible, and uh, although it's not written specifically for marriage, it's really for everyone who, each other, and how we're supposed to re relate to each other. But I really think today, and as we look at marriage, um, how can you not apply it today? And it's an amazing application of how you two 
and how Christians are going to interact. But now as we're going to think about this in a little bit too, think about this when it comes to your relationship with each other and what that's going to look like in, in reality And because God talks about that too because love is going to be the basis of that. 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. And now thinking of these two things, let's hear the words of Jesus, and I'm going to talk a little bit longer on this. These are what Jesus said. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a crash. I am slightly handy enough to be dangerous, right? You give me the right tools, a YouTube video, I can probably do a few things. Maybe not that well, maybe not that right, but enough that Jill is slightly okay with it, <laughs> right? Know. We know, yeah. But I, I, I'm thinking for both of you, you, you two are, are, I'm sure, much more handy than me. Um, and, and so you think about that, right? Uh, I'm guessing even the both of you, Unlike me, if you have the right tools, you probably don't need a YouTube video. You can probably figure it out. And so you start to think about that. When we're thinking about, as Jesus talks about these words, he's talking about the right tool for your marriage. And so when you start to see what the right tool was, it's that word love. But notice how the love is talked about. It's not the love from the love songs. Um, it's not really even love that's centered on coming from inside of you both. The love you have for another is actually the love that comes from God first. So that's really the beginning of that right tool for the job. Because I don't know about you, but you hear that message of 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. And you're like, how in the world are we going to pull this off? Right? How in the world am I going to be patient? Am I going to be kind? How in the world am I, right? I'm always protecting, always trusting, always hoping, always persevering, never failing. You might just want to walk out the door right now as I'm talking about this, right? That even, but, but here's the reality. No one goes into marriage, if you know how God speaks about it, and thinks it's going to be this simple, skip through the fields, love and life every single day. Justin, you know, right, when you are working on houses, you have the right tools, you have the right equipment, you have the beautiful siding, you have the nicest shingles, you have the, the perfect nail gun, and you can make everything look perfectly, but if that wood underneath the shingles is rotting if the termites are in the walls when you put the siding up the rain's going to come and the wind's going to blow and what's going to happen no matter how good you did the job leaks siding's going to start to hang things are going to look terrible and so you start to think about these words of love that comes from Christ if you both think that 
you two are going to be strong enough on your own. We'll get through this. Love of each other, that'll kick us through the times when it's going to be raining and storming. And you've already been there. You know, every day there's a storm, there is rain. We all know that. It's not, it's not, it might come. It is in the middle of it. And then there's going to be great days too, right, where the, there are no storms and life is perfect. But notice what Jesus says. Whoever puts these words of mine, lift doesn't, but builds the foundation, the foundation on rock, not on sand. The rock of your marriage is not love for each other. The rock of your marriage is Jesus' love for you. And so when the days are hard and when you think you want to give up and when life gets more and more complicated as kids get older and you ask yourself, how am I going to make it through you're not going to make it through on your own. You got Jesus, his love for you. When you feel like a failure and you lost your cool, when you feel like a failure and you weren't patient, when you feel like a failure, when you think I'm not persevering, yeah, welcome to the club. And so it says love forgives, but love forgives because we know that Jesus forgave us. Love is patient because we know that God is so patient with us. Love always protects because God always protects us. Love never fails, not because you two never fail, but love never fails because the love is based on Christ's love for you. So when there are failures and there are problems, when there are storms, you take a breath and you remember Remember God's perfect love for you in Jesus. Then Ellen, you can forgive Justin. <laughs> right? And Justin, you lose your get frustrated with, with kids in life, you, you can forgive. You say, I can get through this. Not because I'm so good, but because God is so good. Because my marriage is not going to stay solid because you two are just wonderful people. You are, but your marriage will stay solid because God is a wonderful God who always loves you, who has always forgiven you, who has never left your side no matter what. And so I know everybody here, that's our prayer for you. I know that's my prayer for you and my family's prayer that your marriage starts today with the love that comes from God, a love that's founded on Jesus, that everyone here is thanking him today, that God brought two imperfect people together, but holds you together as imperfect as you are with the perfect love that comes from him through Jesus Christ who lived and died for you. Don't ever forget, God is strong enough. And today, I'm thanking God. Not just that you found each other, not that just you are together, but that you are beginning your marriage with the foundation of Jesus Christ as your rock and as your cornerstone that no matter what happens, no matter what, he'll get you through. Amen. ready? Okay, here we go. I get my glasses on. Ellen and Justin, you have come here to be united in marriage, which consists in your mutual consent, sincerely and freely given. I now invite you to declare this intent in the presence of God in this assembly. Justin, will you have Ellen to be your wife, to live with her in marriage according to the word of God? Will you love her, honor her, support her, and be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I will. will. 
Ellen, will you have Justin to be your husband, to live with him in marriage according to the word of God? Will you love him, honor him, support him, and be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I will. Now join your hands and make your promises to each other. Yeah, please. Justin, you're going to go first, so just repeat after me. I, Justin, call in the presence of God and this assembly take you, Ellen Rohde, to be my wife to have and to hold from this day forward for better for worse for, better, for, worse, for, richer, for, poorer, for richer for poorer in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish until death parts us. Until death parts us. Your turn, Ellen. I, Ellen Rohde, in the presence of God and this assembly. In the presence of God and this assembly. Take you, Justin Call, to be my husband. Take you, Justin Call, to be my husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish, to love and to cherish until, death parts us. until death parts us. We'll now exchange rings as a symbol of the lifelong commitment you have made to each other. Now, Justin, repeat after me. Ellen, I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and faithfulness. Okay. Repeat after me. Justin, I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and faithfulness. Lord, pour out your blessings on your servants that they may always remember their solemn promises and trusting in your mercy may live in love all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Since Ellen and Justin have committed themselves to each other in marriage before God and this assembly, I declare that they are husband and wife. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, those whom God has joined together, let no one separate God, the Holy Trinity, preserve you in faithfulness, strengthen you in love, and guide you to life's end. Let's pray. Eternal God, source of love, help Ellen and Justin to fill their promises they have made today and to reflect your unfailing love in their love for each other. Grant them kindness and patience, affection and understanding, happiness and contentment. Encourage their family and friends to support them in difficult days that their love for each other may continue to grow as long as they live. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. It is now my privilege and honor 
to present to you for the first time Mr. and Mrs. Justin and Ellen Call. <laughs> 